and now it doesn't drain and it is a mosquitoey mess down here. Good afternoon, beautiful people. All right, it is another, actually it feels like a like a June summer day. That's the beginning of April. All right, so if you watched yesterday's video, you saw we were reclaiming a bunch of bricks that have been down here kind of by our pigs, sinking in a, a pile of mud. Uh, they've been there since we got here. Um, we've added to the pile, we've taken from the pile. Uh, but it was time to use that pile of bricks for something. Stay tuned, you'll get to see what that's getting used for. Well, while we were down here, I finally decided to address something that has really been kind of bothering me. This is our, our pig setup. These are the feeder pigs we're growing out. And how we've been raising them, it's, I mean, it's kind of worked. It's been okay. These are the stationary pens. How I really like raising pigs is out in the woods. Uh, to me, those pigs seem to thrive. They have stuff to eat, stuff to do. These pigs, I really have to add stuff to these pens to uh, keep these pigs happy and busy. What I would like to do, end, end goal, is I would like to be able to build compost with the pigs. The way these pens are currently set up, that's not possible. What I'm going to do today is I'm actually gonna get in this middle pen because I don't have any pigs in this middle pen. Uh, I'm going to get all this mud pushed back up to the hill. Um, the pigs who are in here, I guess as they root, they basically, they leveled out the ground. And so it brought the, the dirt level up out here at the front because the slope just kind of comes from, you know, that way down to where I'm standing. Well, they basically cut in level. I'm gonna push a lot of this dirt back up, get it to where it actually drains again because what happened was they ended up making a wallow and now it doesn't drain and it is a mosquitoey mess down here. Uh, I'm gonna get this graded out. There is a building project I would like to do. I probably won't have time for it today, but I would like to be able to divide this pen into two, have a pen that's you know still got access to the, uh, the hog cabin, and then I would like to build somewhat like if you've ever watched Sow the Land or Justin Rhodes for that matter, they've done the pig port system where they put in a carport, walled it in, filled it with wood chips and raised feeder pigs in that, that system. First time I ever saw that system, I saw Jason's, I saw Justin's. Amazing that you can raise pigs like that. Well, what they do is you fill the thing full of wood chips the pigs poop in it, they turn it, and it basically composts. And then by the time you're done with those pigs and they go to freezer camp, you've got an entire carport worth of wood chips that has converted into compost. That's something that I have admired and I would very much like to do. I think I can do it with this side of this pen. So what I'm gonna do today is we're gonna get these cinder blocks out of here and I'm actually gonna take down the fence so I can get the tractor in here and start leveling this out. There's a couple trees in here. I don't know if you can see it. There's one back there that uh, the pigs from chomping on it, they actually ringed it and killed it. Um, that one's dead. You can see this one, that one's dead. But I've still got one tree left in that pen that didn't get eaten and killed. I'm gonna go grab the tractor and some backup and I think we're gonna stack all these bricks just up here against the barn out of the way and uh, then I can take that fence down and get in there. So, I'm gonna get started.
fence line out front is clear. I'm gonna go dump that rubble. Uh, come back, pick up the odd bits of wood that are over here, and then I can get to pushing around some dirt. Pigs are so social. You're just laying right here next to the fence, watching what I'm doing. Both sides. Both sides. All the pigs are just sitting here watching everything I'm doing. It is hot out here in the sun. All right, now the fun part. Now I get to push all this dirt back where it belongs. This is the fun, easy part. I've been wanting to do this for like two years, watching it get muddier and more uneven and to the point where it doesn't drain anymore. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, so this is kind of uh, cathartic for me. It's uh, a little bit therapeutic, if you will. I'm going to go to town. actually a ton of dirt that wasn't as bad as I was expecting I'll walk down there real quick so actually one of the things I was kind of afraid of is something I found is as I've added wood chips to these pens to try to you know keep the pigs out of the mud really like pigs need a wallow like uh, these ones are as I've been out here they've been getting muddier and muddier because they keep going over to the water they're just letting the water run and then they're wallowing in the mud that they're making. That's what pigs do. Um, in case you didn't know, pigs can't sweat. They need to wallow. I think that's true. Or is that dogs? Anyways, pigs need mud. That's how they keep cool. That's also how they keep like lice and stuff like that down. The mud actually helps pigs. Having the entire pen be mud on the other hand is miserable. Um, they need a place to get out of the mud, otherwise that's how you get illnesses and, you know, hoof problems. Well, because the pig that was in here kind of regraded it and basically made the whole thing into a giant mud hole, the whole pen was mud. What has happened, when I got in here, I added a whole bunch of wood chips. Oh, I don't know, maybe like, it's been a constant thing. I add wood chips and then rain happens and then the wood chips go away. And I just figured maybe they're just breaking down or heck, maybe the, maybe the pig's eating them or something. Like, where are they going? Well, what happened is as the pig would walk on them, it would push them down into the mud and bring mud up. Basically, all of the wood chips are down about four to six inches. Uh, so getting in here, 
I can find the layer where there's wood chips and then I'll go a little bit deeper and then there's more wood chips. Uh, what I was afraid of is that it would all become anaerobic because, um, you know, the nature of a pig pen is uh, they can get kind of stinky. Well, I was afraid this whole thing was going to be so anaerobic it was just going to reek to high heaven, which it doesn't really. It, it, is, it smells a little bit anaerobic, but it's not real bad. That's, that's positive. I think it's, it's sat since uh, January, so we've got a couple months where nothing has been walking on this and it's actually kind of dried out. Getting it to where it will actually drain will be nice. It means all of the rain that we have it will just run off rather than getting stuck right here at the fence line and making a giant pool of mud. There's a little bit more I can do out here. Um, I've actually got to take down a couple of the trees that got killed. That's a good example. When Bubbles was in here, he ringed almost all of his trees. That one right there is still alive. He didn't kill that one. This one's dead. That one's dead. Um, and he just rang them all the way around, ate all the bark off, and killed them. And so now I've got dead standing trees. So much for leaving some shade in here. And then this one, I think this one actually drowned. Because this one has all its pine needles, whereas these ones don't. Well, I guess that one has a little bit. But yeah, the way this one died all of a sudden, this right here is basically the deepest part of the mud. And this is where... Uh, lamb chop always did her business was right here in this corner and she worked it into soup so I wonder if it just poisoned the tree and killed it it's too much nitrogen I guess is what's going on anyways this is like awesome to see I'm happy I was able to get in here and do this now now I can scheme I'll decide what I want to do if I want to like buy a carport and stick it down here or build something basically if i build it it's just going to be t-posts cattle panel and some roofing to build walls and then i'll put a roof on it to keep it dry so it's not so so i can control the moisture uh, and then i can stick a couple of these guys in there and try doing the i guess kind of like the piggerator idea that'd be really cool all right i'm gonna go up to the house get cleaned up and eat some lunch what uh what got, oh. Pickled eggs. Pickled eggs. And beets. I was like, that doesn't look like the right color red. <laughs> Pickled eggs and beets, yes. I think last time I picked up the camera, I said I was gonna go eat lunch, which I did. Oh, okay, good. I ate lunch and then Meg was over there working on her uh, herb garden. Yeah. And then I sat down and had a coffee, hanging out with the baby and you came over and then we sat and talked about grand plans and we, we have always done our best scheming, usually over a cup of coffee. Yes. That's, that's usually the best time to do scheming. Um, and so we, we went and walked around the orchard and ended up walking pretty much the entire property. And then it was like, she goes, hey, what time is it? It's like, oh, it's about five o'clock. She's like, I got to go start dinner. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So some time has passed some since time. lunchtime. So I'm starting dinner. All right. I mean, it looks like you're off to a good start. <laughs> You did. What is that? Leeks. 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 Good. Thank you. And oh, chops. Jalapeno. Sorry. Chops. My bad. So, what are you making? Chili. Chili. Chops. You know, it's like a hundred degrees today, right? I know. I know. I made this menu plan when it was still cold. That's all right. I do love me but, some chili. Yeah. It'll be good. So, and then we'll have it. And this is a good. Like, I make a bunch, and then we can put it in the freezer. It, it is really nice like if we're out doing stuff and come home and it's like oh i gotta make dinner and you can just pull out chili yes it's like ah so, well good i like chili and it's it's easy i just like throw it all in a pot and let it simmer for a little bit and we're good to go cool so i gotta mix up my chili seasoning because i make my own seasoning so i was out of course you do I, I mean. <laughs> uh -huh. all right so you want to say that again <laughs> i'm making chili tonight with Local ground beef from our friends, peppers from our garden, leeks from our garden, tomatoes from our garden, beans that I can myself, and chicken broth that we can. And the chickens grew up and lived their whole life here. Right out there, right in the grass. Pretty proud of that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, when we say eat local, right? <laughs> I don't think it gets much more local than I don't think so. your yard. Nope.
That's cool. That's pretty cool. I was, like, I was about to put these in it. I was like, wait a minute, I think I still have that canned flap. And I do. So you put those those canned imported tomatoes away. Those are clear jars. We we can still see. <laughs> see. No, I always keep enough on hand to use, but I have my own. Uh, that's called uh, being prepared in the pantry department. Yes. yes. Well, that's awesome. It is awesome. I'm excited. You lady got some sunburn today. I did. I'm feeling it. The longer you've been out of the sun, the and this camera actually makes you look worse than you look in oh, person. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was in the shade for a lot of it, actually. It was just one of those days. It was kind of cloudy, mm -hmm. off and on. Oh, I'm excited. Are you excited? We haven't had chili in a long time. We have time. not had chili in a long time, and it's pretty spicy. So, I hope you're okay with that. This is uh, this is our chili. This is not the chili that you make when we have company. No. <laughs> No, I make company chili. We're <laughs> company. You know, I don't like to kill my guests. Burn them. <laughs> yeah. The company chili she makes. There's, yeah, there's, there's like, no point in eating it. Us usually, what I do is I'll come over here to this this nice hanging bundle of peppers, and I'll get one of those and cut it up and drop it in my bowl of chili, and it actually makes it to where it's tasty, nice and spicy. All right, I'm gonna set this camera down and grab a bowl because I'm ready to eat. All right. I'm ready to eat. All right, Buggy, I got you a bowl of chicken here. Too spicy? Too spicy? <laughs> it's, good. it's a good heat, but. When you have a whole bowl, it, it creeps up on you. It, it, it does kind of creep. Uh, it wasn't too spicy. It was it's like, I would say that was like a medium spicy. Yeah, pretty good. Medium to eh, not even high spicy. Was, if you're it eating it by itself, it's very spicy. But with the chips to kind of buffer, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not too yeah. bad. It was good. Thank you. You're I'm welcome. very much looking forward to eating that later. Yes, it that, gets better. That actually worked good. I don't know if it's that way for a lot of people, but... Please, can I get down? Yeah, you can get down. Yeah, you can get down. A lot of guys I used to work with back in California really, really enjoyed spicy food. And they would always tell me, yeah, you're doing it wrong. You know, because it was hot out there. It was real hot out there. It'd be 110 degrees, 115 degrees, and they're eating peppers like they're going out of style. It's like, how can you do that? Like, it's so hot. This is in my, my early days. And they're like, they, if you eat these, they keep you cool. And I thought that was the craziest thing I'd ever heard. And then, you know, I developed a taste for spicy, spicy food. And sure enough, like, if you can handle some spicy stuff and it's hot outside, eat a couple peppers, eat something real spicy, and all of a sudden you don't care that it's hot outside. <laughs> it works. It's like magic. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it, it's kind of warm in here. We, we're we fighting turning on the AC just yet. Yes, it's uh, too early. Like it's, it's April, we're not turning on the air conditioning no. yet. So the spicy is helping you deal the with that? The spicy is helping me deal with okay. the heat. Okay, good. I wish I had had it for lunch. Then the afternoon wouldn't have been so sweaty. Yeah. Actually, the afternoon probably would have been just as sweaty, but my mouth would have been burning, so I would have forgot about it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it was. <laughs> so, with all that, I think we're gonna call it a night here, yep. so. We will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.